What's going on everybody? My name is Terminus and today I bring to you another blind commentary, blind reaction to Made in Abyss episode 8 of season 2. Yeah, um, we have backstory finally. Wicko is telling us what's happening in the world, uh, or rather what did happen in the world eons ago um, when they were still mortal when they were still making their way into the abyss. At the very least for us it's eons ago since we've lived up there all this time and time is working differently for them. It might have been a completely different time frame. That being said, they're probably all immortal considering they are hollows. Uh, does that make Nanachi immortal? I don't know. I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I don't know if they're truly immortal uh, in the sense that um, Midi was. Midi obviously could be killed, but what I mean is if they're truly immortal in that sense that they don't ever die from old age, or if that's a thing that's specific to some hollows. But either way, we're gonna learn a lot, uh, and we're gonna quickly go through the, the last episode. Um, let us take a look at that. Um, yeah, we're meeting the um, the interference units. Uh, our guy Vasukian being uh, as crazy and upfront as always, uh, seeing everything in a positive light, almost to to a creepy degree, right? We'll learn about that a little bit, or we see that a little bit later in the episode. Um, we found out we can't turn back. Um, and that is a rough thing, right? Oh, the only way we have is down. Uh, Belaf with his beautiful wavy hair in his eyes. And we declare this is actually a good thing. We're gonna explore this new land. And he frames it in a way as to try to motivate everybody to stay here. And despite the fact that we do have dangerous, dangerous creatures going on here. Beautiful, beautiful title screen on that. Um, I could have used that as as a thumbnail, but I didn't because the other shot was just too too amazing, almost like awe-inspiring. And we make our way here, right? Real adventure stuff. We figure out the glyphs. We we map the area. We find out how far uh, do we have wa places where we can get water. How do we get food, right? We we learn of new little um, harmless. Um, Harmless creatures down here that do a lot to protect themselves, right? Have a shell and all of that. Interestingly enough, the shell, I think the shell got taken away by us uh, because we thought, like, we're, we're gonna protect it, it's easy. And what happens later, it gets killed. Um, Iramui um, having a real, real uh, attachment to the little critter, and Weko too, she's like, gotta protect. And uh, who wouldn't be? And we do see how they how they close that connection even further as time goes on. We cultivate the land, right? We make ourselves some food. We we uh, employ the help of the interference units. Uh, we make ourselves a gate. I saw that somewhere. Nice, nice shot, by the way. Stuff like that, reflection on the water surface, and um, amazing we find water we drink it we tame beasts or kill them in order to have food to to eat um, and we bond right Iremu, um explains her situation even further we knew to a degree but she's like everybody paid me attention because women are important in that society because they bear children and um, their values directly attached to that which isn't too far off from other societies in the past um, and we do have that obviously this is a super important role but being only reduced to that role has the great problem that even if you might be very smart or nice or have abilities that are in a different category if there's an overemphasis on a specific thing that people um, that is expected of you as the person, the role you are born into. Um, we we land at a point where suddenly they, they don't look at her anymore, they don't pay her any attention, they cast her out because they think it's a bad omen or a curse of some kind, right? Go back to the pit where you came from kind of deal. 
And Belov, Belov listens to that, right? Belov feels for them. I do think because that that expression on his face tells me as much. I do wonder. I do really wonder what happened to him. But we have that little talk here and there, right? As the episodes go on, about how desire or desires change us, right? If what what we desire most is put in front of us, if our wishes are fulfilled, it changes us and our journey ends, right? Or do we grab a new desire? It's stuff like that is it's very interesting to think about as it is presented to us. Um, and she just has that fear of abandonment, right? Of being abandoned. Um, and we do see later that all of that stuff that she learned growing up, right? How how her worth is tied to being able to bear children, in this case, not being able to bear them. Um, Weko share, sharing one of her weaknesses with her, being like, I'm, I'm in the same boat, I can't hear. Although for her, it probably hadn't the same value, right? Because it wasn't valued as incredibly high um, or overvalued in her society. Uh, maybe it was even fortunate for her, right? Because with her backstory of abuse. And we, right, we slay the beasts, we make the land our own. We, we fight off predators. And this is like where we see, oh no, the shell is actually here, the shell is actually here. But we can't stop it from being snapped anyway. And Iremiu wants to go, wants to save it, but we can't. There's no way we can. And inc incredible pain that that causes, obviously, right? If a pet abuse that, it's a family member at this point. If you've had it long enough, right? You cared for it. Kind of like a child, almost. Not, not, not literally, but it is a very comparable thing, especially for somebody so young. Uh, somebody who who is younger and more vulnerable than you, that you could take care of, that gives you affection and love, that you give affection and love. Uh, yeah, and gifts that we get. Um, and actually um, thinking about this series and re-watching it while editing it, and also I've, um, I'm looking and watching Tibu's reactions as well along... Um, as he makes his progress through the seasons of Made in the Abyss and there's something that occurred to me um, between episode 7 and this reaction for episode 8 and that is that I do believe um, up until now I always thought Irem Yui was uh, was uh, Fapta but I don't think that's the case um, and what made me kind of realize that is that I reread a line that we've seen in episode 4, I think, where Weko is telling um, a story, right? Is narrating and saying, uh, Fapta, you left her for, or you left her for posterity. And that makes it sound like Ira Mui left Faputa in the world, right? For posterity. Um, as something of a product of you and the interesting thing right the interesting thing that kind of made me snap onto maybe she's her daughter in in some way shape or form is that this is kind of this makes sense with her backstory and what we get to know going forward in this episode seven here uh, again um Belaf always watching i do wonder why he has such a keen interest in the two of them he seemed to be very interested in Weko to begin with. Um, maybe he has some point of connection. Um, he said he, he's fascinated by her eyes, right? How deep they are. Uh, and that they're beautiful in a way. Uh, so I do wonder what's, what's up there, what's going on there. But either way, we have parasites to some degree, right? They're in the water. We can't use any other water because we don't have any other water sources that aren't um, upstairs, uphill, right, where we would be affected by the curse and for some reason or another the interference units can't just get the water for us. I don't know why. And we have this weird stuff, right, of them turning into wood. <coughs> Though I don't know. I don't think that is the parasite, right? I think the... Or... 
Yeah, I do think it's a parasite, actually, because it happens to Eremui as well, right? It happens to Eremui as well. Um, and I do think it happens to her before she gets the, the, the wish-granting egg, right? The Cradle of Desire. I might be wrong on that, but assuming it is, I do have no idea why they turn into wooden shapes. Right? Unless they're fucking Arara Araragi from Monogatari and say, I want to turn into a tree. Right? <laughs> but yeah, we, we find out that this is actually the carcass of a beast that probably was um, subject to the same disease. Subject to the same stuff. Um, yeah. And we do find them with the wish granting egg. So maybe it is the egg and not the, the parasite. Um, and she says, it, I think it's a relic. Yeah, we do think that. Um, and we ask the interference units and they are like, this is the cradle of desire. Uh, but the water itself seems to be a living organism. That is fascinating in and of itself, right? That something that you see as like a normal substance. Water is actually a living thing. Um, and we do have the narration that the supernatural power of, great, of the Great Pit sends our greed and send it to us. What greed? I don't see... This is the interesting thing. I wouldn't call it greed to wanting to survive and make your place here, but maybe it is, right? It, from a certain angle it can be, right? Being greedy, wanting to survive in this harsh environment. Nobody has survived before, right? We find it and we, we want to ask the, the interference units uh, what it is all about. Interestingly enough, how, how Vasukyan definitely, absolutely does not give a fuck about drinking the water. He's like, well, I guess that's shit, but we have to do it anyway. It's just drinking. It's like with the bugs. It's it's absolutely nonsensical because normally the bugs who are like on the ship or whatever, they, they, they spread disease and he's like, ah, it's preventing disease. Right? Bro is a madman. Um, yeah, they want to find out what's happening and they're like, mm, I don't know. Um... These kids were still alive when they got here. It's like, does this relic perhaps have something to do with it? And they're like, that thing did it. Round relics are shape of wishes. Interesting. Big or models too strong. And this one is very strong. Uh, and she's like, what kind of wish made them end up like this? So it must be the relic, supposedly. No, not just any kind of wish. That is a cradle of this egg cradle, not the cradle. Egg cradle. So there's more than those. Uh, than this one. It's a wish granting at Cradle of Desire. You should not touch it directly. Right? We're talking about pure wishes, right? Juveniles, teenagers are better for it because their wishes are closer to the purest form. I would assume children's wishes would be even purer, especially if those children grew up well and didn't get psychologically or physically damaged while growing up. But we do have... See, that's the thing I'm talking about, right? Um, they all get affected by this. So it's not the cradle, it's the parasite thing that's turning them into, like, weird shapes. Hmm. Very, very curious. I, I can't wait for this to be explained down the line. Or maybe just never explained and left open to a degree. Great. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so they didn't they didn't use the wish granting egg yet, and they all have these things, right? These, but I don't know if the wooden thing that we saw on those people, uh, the, on like the scout team, um, and like the weird amalgamation hand thing that we see on on our affected um, affected members of the group now are the same thing. Um, yeah, and she wants to, to have. Um, Iramui use it and he's like yes use it and this is when we get this this insane sentence right um where he approves it and he's like um she will be our salvation like like it's set in stone like it's a prophecy she's like this is the first time and her eyes are like impressed in awe but also terrified right there's some there's something terrifying about him they did a good job at really um, making that happen. Um, I don't know where she actually said that with the, like the divine prophet, the name, uh, the 
Yeah, it, here she says that she will be our salvation. It was the first time I'd seen it close up. The face of a divinely possessed prophet. Right? Possessed. Possessed by the abyss, right? Because he, in the beginning, right, when we had the three sages and they went out on their journey, he already believed he was chosen, right? He was a prophet. He had visions. And the abyss is granting them visions. Luring them in here for some purpose or another. There is this 2000 year cycle that we have no idea about, right? That is somehow tied to extinction possibly maybe of the surrounding area or the things in the abyss or even the world we don't know that to which degree but what purpose does it have why does it exist right and it needs to be a functionality to it it's not just like okay i'm gonna wipe you out every time we have the same thing like in mass effect we where i'm not gonna spoil the like the the thing but where we do ask why 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 do the reapers have the thing going on that they have right why they're just what's the reason and there was some theories about like uh mass effect 2 when they changed like the ending and the conclusion that there was originally another purpose of why they did what they did and whatever and that was a more interesting one for me but uh, it ended up being something different that being said this is the mystery obviously that pulls us along and we asking why why does all of this exist, right? First of all, what is actually happening in the abyss? The question that Rag asked in episode four. And then why is it even happening? What's the purpose of it? Um, and Iremu is feeling great again. Through the through the egg, um, through the through the relic. I wonder what she wished for. And it's like we need to leave it up to them. Need to support them as as much as we can and we keep dropping it keeps getting more and more desperate and we talk right near him you for for her wiko is is a saving grace right what her mother wasn't right um what her mother never could be because of the way society would judge somebody like her and as long as she's the wiko is happy and it doesn't matter how she looks and what, what she turns into. And we do have the same imagery that we ha had when um, when um, Rico was affected by the the curse and, and was recovering and was kind of low-key connected to the abyss. And we do know that much like Iremui and Wiko and everybody else with the relic here, Rico was also affected by a relic, right? Changed by a relic, so... For her own fears to vanish. I don't think she wished for her own fears to vanish. Even if that was maybe the purpose of what she wished for. Because obviously she wished for this child baby to be born. Because that is how she sees value. We had that discussion when we started out with the village of the hollows. And we talked about what is value for people. And it is what they believe is valuable. And for her how she grew up and what she learned value is. And how she learned why she wasn't valuable as a person uh, connects directly to this, right? Get directly to what she wishes for, what she desires. Um, but her desire is not fulfilled because it is a very naive, childish wish of, like, of very vague proportions that can't really encompass everything that is to there is to a living being, to an existing living being. And I do wonder if. What she wished for is not only connected to Fapta, but also to what ultimately Reg or similar um, similar people like Reg um, are in a way. I do wish if I do wish we knew more about this, but we did. We have too little information. If Reg is really from a previous species, maybe there was some wish of immortality going on. Um, we do also have some indications, though, that Fapta is in some kind of way connected to possibly what Reg, um, right, the, the, the robotic parts of Reg. Um, although Fapta call, calling, um, saying my precious in this situation could not just refer to basically what um, Reg's capabilities are in terms of his, his mechanics, right, his mechanical parts, all of the, like, things working but it could also just connect to her really liking Reg as a person and 
and having bonded with him before he lost his memory. But yeah, this is cruel, right? To to have something that you deep deeply wish for granted to you, being happy beyond belief, just to be thrown into these um, moments of despair because it's being taken away from you again, over and over again. This is what makes you makes you break on on an emotional level, long term. It's like I do imagine that being a very good allegory for somebody who whose deepest desire might be out of whatever whatever for whatever reason they might have that desire but their idea of being happy is having children and they want to get a child right she's in that the person is in love with someone and and they're trying to get a child and it finally works and and she's pregnant and she, everything looks fine and suddenly you do have um a, a stillborn right or or something incredibly wrong with the child and 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 it dies shortly after imagine that right the pain you go through like the the um the volatility of emotions from possibly the greatest happiness that you can feel in any given moment um because there is right it was your greatest wish but also in addition to that there is the hormonal the hormonal excretions that you have, right, that that are happening when you give birth and whatnot, and then being thrown into absolute despair right after by having taken away this thing, and and not knowing who to blame or what to blame because, hmm, right, somehow you at some point you're gonna feel cursed if it happens not one time but a couple of times and you keep trying but it doesn't work out. And most of them give up at that point and you go to adoption or other things and even that is difficult to do right so it's it's all in the balance and you're anxious about it and i can't imagine how it is and for her it's doubly so because for her all of the value that she attributed to herself at least until she met wicko and the rest of the party was this thing that she was incapable of doing that she now again is incapable of doing yeah uh, and Weko is affected too, and she feels guilty for. She feels guilty for for just thinking about just water, and I do wonder if that is in a way a part of what the Paris, what's so problematic about the parasite that if you maybe realize the problem is water, even then you have that a stronger and stronger desire for water in addition to your usual right having to take in water obviously in order to survive. Uh, because it makes you have that desire, right? In order to replicate itself more in your body, um, which is what a parasite wants to do, right? Or even even a virus, of course, but also parasite in this case. And um, I do also imagine at this point in time, right, that the technological level they're at, they don't exactly know what parasites are. So, right, so, so you don't know. And if the, the robots, the interference units don't know, then you don't have any idea how to how to combat that in any way i mean even we today have really hard time with parasites because um well first of all because it's not as uh frequent but also because parasites are different from viruses uh, defeating viruses and bacteria is a little bit easier parasite kind of hijack parts of your organs to to replicate themselves and all of that shit so yeah that's that's nasty business i hate that thought really but yeah, she, she's feeling very guilty of like not thinking about Irem Yui who is going through all of that. And that shows once again that Wicca is so empathetic towards people. Um, maybe to an unreasonable degree, but also, I mean, I guess learning that through hardship of, of, of her own and taking care of, care of people actually being one of the things that she derives worth from, right? Um, to a degree at least. Um, and he feeds her and she's like this is delicious and has like right very well done and just in her fever dream and then she wakes up and and looks out and it's morning a sunshine through it's like a revelation right you stepped into a holy land or some some shit you it's the, a new dawn to quote um to quote bond root from from the movie um yeah and we do have that expression again surprised in awe maybe but also slightly afraid and, and terrified 
Um, and that is that is fear and possibly even more than that shock, right? Something happened here. He revealed something that we're not supposed to know yet. Maybe we can guess at it, but um, yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna go into too much speculation. I don't know how Iremu saved us, but there's gonna be something terrible, and I don't know how. I don't know why. And yes, the song makes more and more sense as we go through it, right? I still remember you. Um, though everything has changed from a place even deeper than the seabed, I'm still watching over you. Um, be that Eremui to, um, to, to Weko or Weko to Eremui, I don't know. But our futures have been pulled apart, right? Um, either Eremui died or something keeps them apart. I still love you even though I miss you. I will be here for you always and forever. In the dark swarm embrace. <laughs> uh, and the next title was, I don't know anymore. The form the wish takes. Oh... And this is where the split happens, right? This is where the group splits. I don't know if Belov splits at this point, right? If he puts himself on the side of v Vasugyan and they're like, this had to be done, whatever it is that, that was done. And Weko is kind of splitting there. Or or if we're splitting a two-way split where Belov and Weko are kind of connected and, and Belov is on Weko's side. And um, Vasugyan is opposed to them. And then, at some point, something happens where Belav can overcome this, but Weko can't. Um, and Vasukyan and Belav are trying to found this village in a way. However, that is going to happen. And as a result of that, Weko doesn't like the consequences of it happening, right? Doesn't like what's, what that entails. Um, and they already split a little bit, right? Their relationship was already damaged. And now they split for good and they portray Weko and then by locking her in in order to prevent um prevent her from from doing anything about it i don't know if that's what was the case i think she's remembering something along the lines that she said she actually went down there even though it was too late so there could be different connotations to this but i'm i'm looking forward to it all right um as you know, probably, um, there is two versions of this uh, of this reaction. The pip is in the description down below. Uh, watch that if you want to watch that. If not, edited version is right here for your convenience. Um, I do hope you enjoy. All right, Main Abyss, Season 2, Episode 8 starts in a 3, a 2, a 1. Ooh, Regu. I thought we already had that. Hmm. Oh, oh, she's gonna ask her again, of course, and she's waiting here. It was just so similar to the other one. Oh, Promise. わずかな記憶にある<笑> And obviously that's shocking for Reg. She can regenerate, probably. So... The question is, what did he promise her just now? Oh, the music! Kevin, please! We are here as a result of the choices we made. 
We have to find those answers for ourselves. And this is where it ended. Ooh, and back to the intro. Holy moly. How is this relic connected to the compass, by the way? Bella, what's happening? Couldn't resist. Oh no. Oh, what was in the food? What the hell was in the food, Bella? And this is the point. And he's gonna distract her. I mean, she's not gonna be distracted, but... Oh. Alright. I, I have a sneaking suspicion. Oh, holy shit. And she wasn't there to help her, right? <sighs> but we need more food. そしたら水もどきの症状まで緩和してさ。うん、せんだなんじゃないかな。お願いは命に宿るものさ、本当綺麗だよね。おお。やってみる料理。おっと、気をつけてね。冷やみ上がりなんだから。Oh, does he not understand? Is he worse than Bondroot? <laughs> so what can be done about Eremue? But what were you able to do, Weka? Yeah, but I mean, I, I. Oh yes, and she's gonna kill her, isn't she? Oh, she's gonna kill herself. No, what the hell are you doing? It almost sounds like Waco. Is uh, the relic in there? Yeah, this is hard. And you ate too, of course. Uh, 
And look at him today, right? Can't resist gouging himself on his desires. Even in hell, people keep on living. And every time the same thing happens. Mm. Is this is what is this what Fapta gets born from? Yeah, it's the egg. It's still there. Oh, he put it in there. And she made a second wish. Oh, that's right. What's the harm? Oh, and he has no regrets. Not a shred of empathy. Not even bondred levels. And there we go, right? She can move? Okay. I mean, say about him what you want, but... He saved their lives, of course, right? That's why nobody abandoned him yet. And there they go. Ooh, sludge. He wants to die. Better <sighs> what happened to you. Also, that shape is ridiculous, by the way. Close to the center. Rude. Almost like the thing that they met. And he blames himself. Is this how they turn to something else? He wishes. And she will fulfill it. Is that it? Oh, wait. Okay, I have a few thoughts on that. Carcass. And this is how Belaf became Belaf. And she becomes the homeland. Almost like a dreamscape, right? Almost like it's not real, like it just exists in in this bubble. And Weko doesn't want to. Oh, 
And she parts ways. She goes. Is she gonna jump? Defiance. And he's gonna save her? Or she's gonna save her? Yeah. He ain't gonna let her. He used to cradle on himself. And he imprisons her. Not even Belaf. Suffer together with her. Greed. strong belief. Desire. And you choose to live in this dream world of yours. And she is responsible for Irim Yui. Irim Yui is chaining her down, right? In this case. The remnants of her, at least. Holy shit, some of the people we've seen, right? Yeah. これは夢なかったな。誰にも悟られぬよう、ひた確信、ひた確信。ただ一つの願いを叶えようと。Fapta. Yeah. Who lived. And who they could never touch. Your rage, your sadness, your pain. Mm. Your will living on. Let us kill them together, all of them. Oh, 
Light in the darkness. Yes, because they were trapped in here. And she hopes that she'll be back. <sighs> the shapes of their souls. And she names them. And this is how sh the thing, right? Or even you, we can fulfill wishes. How a second BT was born. Oh, she inherited them. Value, right? Mm. Tear it all down. Yes. Yeah, but if she inherited your mo her mother's will. Yeah, but it's you, Weka. Some things she really thinks about, I think. Keep her memory, alright. I still remember you. That is a heavy episode. Diff completely different from what I thought, but also a little bit what I've been thinking. Children, souls. I do wonder if all of these souls, if that is similar to, to the mechanism that the Abyss has to supposedly return the souls of deceased people to the place they want to be. If that is connected to that, if it came from Irimui, so the... I mean, this specific case of the children, the souls of the children returning, or if this came from the Abyss and the Abyss sent them back and Yerimiyo received them as somebody who has this this um, Cradle of Desire, which is inherently a part of the Abyss and a tool of the Abyss. So many theories that can go from that, but also not enough information to really make a, a concrete frame for it. But it is very odd and indeed that we do have the structure and shape of a of a relic that looks kind of like shaped like the abyss, right? And it's very similar to to all the other um to all of the other things, relics that are the compass, right? That compass part, the inside being one to one what's inside the cradle. The cradle being more than the compass, but the compass leading us to the cradle, possibly. Maybe even that is the reason why the compass points down into the abyss, because the cradles are the opposite part of the compass, and that's where where it leads you ultimately. And what does it want from you, right? I want to fulfill your desire. Is it a heaven, right? A heaven after death, basically, metaphorically, that fulfills what you wanted. What you deeply desired in your life or what you lacked right this homesickness as they describe it or a longing as as liza said in, in season one oftentimes or is it in the end um is it a trap right 
Is it something sinister luring you down there with your desires and then it takes your desires and it twists them and turns them? Because oftentimes that's how it feels when the story is presented the way it is presented to us. It could be both, of course. It could be anything between taking you to your dreamland and what you always wanted to have for for a prize, right? For prizes like the sacrifice of comrades and the suffering of people that are with you suffering of children right that we have like as a continuous theme throughout this entire show or um or just an a neutral entity that doesn't care about you that has its own functionality its own motives and just uses this effect this functionality of luring everybody into itself in order to fulfill some kind of purpose or if it is a sinister thing even a sinister creation or a sinister entity in true like Lovecraftian fashion where we do have extraterrestrial gods and entities that are so far beyond your comprehension and um, it is fulfilling its own desires and motivations in a very um, yeah in a very sinister and malicious way Anything in between can be between like the good, uh, the misguided good up to, to the malignant, right? And the next title is... The Return. So who returns? Fapta? Reg? Or do we talk about the, the official return of Weko? Do we talk about the return of Iremui? There's so many ways we can interpret that. And we do have this creature here, one of the three sages that came after Beko after she was locked in and kept hidden from everybody else. That took over that place and was fighting earlier on and was kind of asking if that, if, if she, she or it died or um, if, if they survived. And apparently, supposedly, they might have survived. That is a design and a half, by the way. Like, holy fucking shit. That is, that is a Dark Souls boss. Yeah, anyway. um, I'll see you back on YouTube for the discussion. All right, let's talk about this, shall we? I would like to say there's not, not much to talk about, but uh, honestly, we both know we'd be capping, uh, I'd be capping, so. Uh, out the weird force field we go and Fapta is waiting. Um, Fap Fapta says, Rek, if you fulfill your promise, I'm gonna do, like, I'm gonna give you anything you want. And, and I'm like, what is he asking for here? He's like, I, I gladly help you if if you help me. And I'm like, Reg, you don't know what you're promising right here. I mean, as much as um, I'm sure these people, some of them might be relieved to be um, to be done right with with their immortality, and some of them might be um, I don't know, might not want to. Um, some of them might be evil or, or shady creatures with, with questionable morals, but what do you have to keep in mind, Rek? Even for quote-unquote villains like Bondrood, you had a lot of trouble actually putting out a killing shot, right? Making people suffer. I do remember before we actually realized Bondrood could switch bodies when he was about to die in, in Dawn of the Deep Soul. That shook you hard, Rek, so... I don't know what to say to that. And he, she just rips out the arm. She's like, I gladly do that. Do wonder if she actually felt anything with it. But this is what we use, right, as a transition point. And value. I wonder why things ended up like this. No one can give us the answers to those questions. That is because we are here as a result of choices we may we ourselves made. Not necessarily knowing the outcome, but the very least we made choices continuously and went down a path, and this is where we arrived at. We alone have to find those answers. Wasikian with his 
possessed eyes. It's all good. I gave the others some too. And we have yet to realize the, the ramifications, right? The, the sheer horror of what's happening here. And Belov can't bear it. I, I kind of judged him wrong, although I, I thought this was a possibility, him being slightly on Waco's side, but more breaking, right? He can't live with it. He can't live with what he, in extension, he has done or he was complicit in. It's like a person who was present or was somehow in the know about a, a terrible, terrible travesty, crime, whatever, going on. And after the fact, they... They weren't they weren't participating or anything there, but they didn't stop them, right? And they couldn't help but couldn't help but be part of it due to some reason, right? Some terrible thing that was happening. In this case a starvation. He was and he's blaming himself. He's saying like previously I was actually able to to brave starvation, but I can't anymore. And this is so strange, right? Vasukyan be like He's gonna be fine. Don't, don't underestimate us, right? He brushes it away with just a sentence. Be like, don't underestimate him. And in the end, he was right, but he was only right in the sense that Belaf was doing exactly the thing he needed him to do. And he changes the topic. Let's see, Irem Yui. And it's grotesque, right? Like an amalgamation of whatever. What are these relics and 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 force field and whatever that, that that change you so much. Interestingly, a cradle of desire, I, I was thinking just now. It could work kind of akin to what we see in the abyss, right? You go down into the abyss. If you go back up, what hits you are the curses and the blessings, as Bondrit says. And what you do here is a similar process in the terms of like making your wishes right you have a wish you want it fulfilled the wish being fulfilled is a blessing right the cradle of desire being the catalyst for the blessing but it takes from you right it takes what does it take it it takes the curve uh, like it applies the curse right it gives you the curse and transfers the wishes onto something somebody else right or, or onto the thing that you want it to be so there's a price to pay, right? Like like giving a body part or body parts for having something created. And, or Midi, for example, when, when we talked about Bella re having Midi recreated. And in some way, I still don't quite understand how it works, right? Because we had one cradle and later we discovered there's a second cradle going on. The first cradle was about the babies being born. Now the second cradle modified that wish possibly, right? Modified that wish in order to save Wiko, which is, or was uh, Iramui's second desire maybe. Or maybe the cradle was connected. Yeah, I mean, this is what it has to be, right? And Vasikian manipulated Iramui to the degree when, when she was still sentient and could right, comprehend all of these things on an intellectual level. Uh, at least to a degree, um, in order to save the village. And and he's torturing her indirectly. He doesn't think of that. He doesn't care, right? There's no regret in his eyes. There's no... There's, there's no empathy for the being that's in front of him. This is what he saw in his visions, and he's gonna fulfill it. And he's even worse than Bondrud in that regard, because Bondrud was a little bit tone deaf when it, came, when it came to many things, but he was also very good at manipulating things. And he was very good at also just, in his own way, he cared for the people he was using despite using them. I do feel like for um, for Wasakyan here, it feels like he wants to be friends with everyone, right? He wants to make friends with everyone. He um, believes in people and their abilities, but he doesn't have an emotional connection to them in that sense. He just believes in them in the realm, in in the scope of his own vision. He believes in them as much as they, as much as they are of value to him, right? That they are um, fulfilling what he saw and what he prophesied. And 
Belaf said it in the beginning, even if there's no Golden City, he will find it. Which is a way to say, like, even if what we set out to do, we're not going to find it. He'll, he's going to find a way to convince the people to do something or to to seek out something that they originally didn't seek out by reframing it in a way and by man manipulating them in a way and convincing them that this is the right thing to do and that is this is their new hope. A true prophet, a truly divine prophet. And he doesn't care. He don't understand. He's like, what? You want, you want to give cooking a try? And she's horrified and rightfully so. Holy shit. There's not a care in the world in him about this. And again, we, we see the Tekken cradle. And again, I don't understand how exactly the cradles work. Do they always transform the person who takes the cradle? Uh, is it always this horrific, right? Uh, is it always kind of like a monkey's paw giving you what you want, but also not what you want? Um, is there some degree of control that you have over it, maybe, if you learn how to control it? There's certainly probably was impurity in Iremui because um, she was not completely, she was juvenile, she was not completely a child. So we are at the point that um, her wishes aren't as innocent anymore. And there's a lot going on there, right? When we're teenagers, we want to impress people. We want to, we, we, we make connections, right? We're heavily influenced uh, while at the same time growing ourselves and growing our own desires and, and, and processing what we're going through, being in constant development. Um, while as a child, maybe our wishes are still simpler because there's not this, this entire baggage going on in the beginning. Um, we do only have the basic desires, right? The basic things that we want. And as soon as the wants become more complex, there's more elements in there and there's outside interference. Um, it starts become, to become complicated. And I do wonder if this is really what, what, what we say t at the end. Oh, holy shit, look at him. He doesn't really want to eat. He doesn't want to be forced. And I knew this was it, this was where Faputa was... or. In her was Fabda was gonna get born to some degree as soon as I saw this because it kind of um, kind of mirrors what we see later on in the episode this like cocoon thing but yeah grows to incredible sizes um, so I tried I just tried giving her another one right why why the fuck not she's like what the fuck are you doing um, yeah and Wicker's connection to to Iremiyui was important here. And she grew weak, and this is why he imprisoned her, why he didn't let her just end it there. Um, yeah. And he's like, thank goodness they found some in time, right? Everything is on his side. He's, he manages to, and she's like, is this really what she wished for? Come on. But he's blinded, right? For him, this is beauty. Beauty in the sense that his prophecy is going to become true. And everything's gonna be all right, and he's gonna remain the leader. And right, maybe not even the power interests him, but more just his divine fantasies. From whichever place they come, be that a sickness of his own mind, or be that be that the abyss calling him, right? A kind of half trance of an extraterrestrial entity calling and begging his mind sending him visions the whole the whole tone about like the light shining down but his face being clad in darkness it's it's really strong imagery and we move on there's something i didn't un quite understand we came to like a, a stop um and uh, we kind of had explained why she stopped here. All right. Let's see. Leave me behind. He's like, I can't. And he's like, you're indispensable. You were too noble to ever get used to the suffering. None of the rest of us will do. So it needs him, right? It needs him who feels the guilt. Who such a clear-minded noble being right he thinks it needs something like that someone like that to make a wish like this somebody who to go in there who isn't 
who isn't getting used and numb to the suffering. It is a hidden spot is very close to the center of the pit. Which is where the force field is strongest, right? And maybe where the relic is the most effective, I would think. So the shade was the problem. I don't understand what he means by that. Maybe somebody can explain that. The shade. Right, and it's consuming. It's consuming things and he can't take it. He's like, let, let me end it here all together. I want to... I want to be punished, but I couldn't resist. My pride, my convictions are all gone. It's all gone, right? He's broken at this point. All I have left, my pride, conviction, it's all gone. All of his bravado, all of his demeanor, all of his nobleness, so to speak. And he's like, I can't stay human. I don't want to stay human. I want to punish myself. My bones, my soul, every single part of me, devour it all. And if this is his wish, and if Iremui fulfilled it, right? Because she is an extension of the wish-filling device in this sense. Created its cradle here, right? Like Almost like she herself is the wish-granting egg, right? And the more egg she gets, the more, the more power this whole thing has. And he goes through and he's like, I'm ready. And all of these little things uh, that supposedly souls of the children, they, they go through him and they establish a curse on him, basically, I would assume. But we have the double-edged sword, right? He survives it, but he's cursed. But also, he gets his wish. And what is his wish? Or mo rather, maybe a body that completely... Completely, I think Majikasha said that a body that completely encompasses or um, represents his desires. I don't know what it means exactly and how to interpret that. Maybe some of you have the idea and can get me to to that point. Um, and they're all in awe because obviously they follow this religion and their leader Vasukian and. Belaf was one of the most noble, most the, 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 one of the persons they, they looked up to the most as one of the sages and also his personality, right? And he's like, thank you. I'm glad we made it in time. I couldn't have done it without you because if I went in there, it would be different. But in this sense, the shape you take, right? The shape your desires take because you're such a noble person. Um, and you making the first step, that is what can lead everybody else to follow us along. Let us offer us to our queen, this is her homeland, and they revere her while she, as we find out later, at least in in Wicca's theory, she despises it. Oh my... <laughs> my light actually is out of energy, I guess. Damn, that went quicker than I actually thought. Um, and Wicca can't do it, right? She can't do it. Can I see if I can... I don't know if it looks that good, but anyway, she can't do it. And he's like, don't you think the second egg did this to her? And he wants to, he asks what you want, but she doesn't. And he's like, he, I need you, right? Iremiu, it doesn't work without you. As long as you're here, she can hold on. You're imprisoning her. That's what Wicca understands. You're imprisoning her. You're, you're tying her down to the suffering. And Wicca's like, I'm going to end it here. I don't want this to be the case. I don't want it. And she sees herself as selfish for doing that because she doesn't want to... I guess she can in interpret that as, I don't want to keep seeing you suffer. So I'm ending it here all, despite the fact that I might have those thoughts in the back of my mind that if this was really your desire... Um, if my doubts are unfounded, then this is just me doing it out of my own selfishness and conjecture of making my guilt go away and making my suffering end. That warm darkness is mine alone. All right. Right. The suffering, the warm darkness, it's mine alone. I won't let you have the same. And he... He shows his true face here, right? He he catches her. 
he refuses her wish. And you see that he used the cradle in a way. Which tells me that either he manipulated the se second cradle to kind of just get it into what, what he wanted it to be, right? And forced I Iremui to do it, to, to follow along at this point. Um, or he tried it himself, realized it didn't work, and then gave it to Iremui. But either way, it's like shows what his character is about, right? He's all about this. And in this sense, not in all, he has a lot of differences, but in this sense, he is like, like Bondroot. And we see more and more people like that, right? With unwavering convictions that do cross any boundary of morality that you can imagine for the, for the sole purpose of fulfilling some kind of prophecy or desire, some kind of grander goal that you think is above yourself, that you see yourself the messenger or prophet of. This is how cults are being born, right? I mean, this whole thing was a cult to begin with. Outsiders being all led by a group with the belief that they are the chosen ones to find the new holy land. But the, the parallels are extreme here. Like, you, you do see even more of that shining through in the theme. And he's like, yay! In his typical, like, nonchalant, like, I'm, I'm one of the cool guys fashion, but all this bravado, all this charisma that undoubtedly existed within him. Once we see his the truth of his character, we do see that in a way he's very narcissistic, right? He's very self-centered. It's all about his vision and his belief, right? This belief that he is somehow fulfilling a grander goal that is so far beyond everyone else and that he's doing everyone a favor, maybe in spite of people telling him that it's not what they desire. And a lot of people follow along, fair enough, right? A lot of people tell him that he is that person and believe that he's that person because he has proven it here and there, but yeah. You all might call me divine, but I've got to do every... Um, you've witnessed it, right? If you were this cursed pit, in this cursed pit, what would you do for those who came here and did nothing but pray? Right. He sees himself as the savior, right? He has such a, not in the traditional sense, but in the sense like a savior complex. That he's the one who can bring them all salvation. And he is like, remain here to serve my purpose, our purpose. He's packing it in very nice words, right? Please watch over things from he, here where Eremius' feelings reach you directly. And that might be the truth on the surface level, but it's not. I mean, I don't think this is what he believes. Uh, what he believes is that it is for the greater good and he packs it in nice words to make it, make her accept it to a degree. Although supposedly we, we do know from Waco that she can free herself, that it takes somebody else. But her true desire shines through, right? Creating a true daughter, which she actually managed to do, right? An heir for her will, an heir Right, a progenitor, not progenitor, a successor for her revenge, her, brog her progeny, um, whose purpose is, first of all, I do think, to a degree, Wicko, although that's, that's still out, the jury's still out on that, but definitely purpose is to make them suffer for all the children they've taken away from her, uh, especially those that they've killed alive. All those souls that are still down there in the pit of her being, right? That yeah, probably, right, their souls returned to the abyss, possibly one theory, and the abyss gave it back to where they wanted to be, which is with their mother. Uh, and I do wonder how how um, Thapta will or would react. I don't know if it's going to happen if she ever meets Wiko what her attitude towards her is going to be, if there even is one, or if this is like more of a she doesn't know her. But if she's the incarnation of Iremui's will, there has to be a strong reaction to that. Because if it's everything, and not, not just the sole purpose, even though the main purpose might be this revenge, this suffering, this destruction of all the things that keep her imprisoned and keep her from from this true or have kept her from this true desire and caused her the suffering and kept her away from Vico. Um But also, right, also Vico is a very strong thing within Yoram Yui, so 
very possible that Fapta has something of that in there. Even though Virko doesn't believe that, that it is that, or doesn't get the idea, right? Doesn't even have the realization that this might be the case. But yeah. And Iremui was what Virko has been looking for, right? And she hopes that her wish will someday be fulfilled. And as long as that was the case, she remained in here. And we're all shocked at this revelation, right? This deep, very, very somber story. And she looks kind of like just almost embarrassed, being like, sorry. Sorry for being such a downer. But that is literally her her attitude. This, this self-blame, this internalized and, and internalized helplessness that Wicca carries around with herself. And I do wonder if we're gonna... Yeah, if we're gonna get past this in this season and actually manage to find a way to to get wick or something that she that kind of lets her make peace with herself and i do wonder where wick ends up being um if wick comes along on the journey or if fapta comes along on the journey downwards because obviously once once all of this is resolved we're gonna go further downwards this is not the end I still remember you, though everything has changed. I'm still watching over you, yeah? It's Iremui watching over Weko. And vice versa in a way, right? Futures pulled apart for this endless light, uh, night of woe. Love still lives, even now I'm still praying for you. Uh, the dark swarm embrace. I think it could be both of them, but it leans more towards what Wiko would be saying in her head, right? All right, and the next time in Made in Abyss, it's gonna be very interesting where we start off from here. Fapito wants to tear it all down. Wiko finished her story. We're filled in now. Rico can big brain this, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Confrontations might be happening. Bella and Wiko. I don't think Belaf is actually negatively, like, does does have a negative attitude towards Weko. I think that's what all went over Belaf's head. I don't know what Vasikyan told him, but I don't think Belaf is aware of all the extent of what Weko went through and where she was all this time. I don't think so. And if he is, maybe I don't think he is very, um, he's very okay with it, at least if some of the old Belov is inside of him there. Um, if not, everything of him has been broken and lost. And I do believe that. At least if the story wants to remain, for me, uh, in this very specific aspect, believable. Um, yeah. Vasukian is a villain, <laughs> clearly, but we have very interesting villains throughout the entire... Um, throughout the entire show when we have some right we don't need them and that's interesting because the abyss itself is a villain too and to an extent right through bondrood and through vasukyan as well the abyss actually is the the villain behind the scenes right because it is this madness inducing pit this otherworldly strange and creepy thing that draws everybody and everything in and changes and warps it in very gruesome ways that is the the absolute root of all the suffering that our characters went through most of the suffering that our characters went through yeah that's been uh, made in abyss uh season two episode eight i do apologize for the dim lighting at the end you you saw it yourself. Uh, it just went out uh, out of batteries. I do hope that the battery is not actually uh, not that great anymore. Um, I thought I actually loaded it uh, a while, like very sh short while ago. I'll have to check that out again. Um, but I mean, it's been like, what, three or four hours or five hours of continuous being on. But it was only on like a couple of percent, so... We'll have to see. 
just technical talk, you know, I have to. Um, if you did like this video, if you do enjoy my content, please leave me a like. It would be really cool. Um, subscribe to the channel to see more Made in the Biz, uh, more Frieren, more Digital Kaisen, and more um, other things coming possibly soon, question mark. Um, and look out um, for my Patre uh, Patreon links, for my Discord links, all of that stuff. I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, and until the next episode. Thank mm -hmm. you.